Hello, I am doing a review of this reprint of the Latin Vulgate from churchlatin.com, which I've recently acquired. And when I was looking at different Vulgates and considering which one to buy, I didn't see any reviews of this. So, um, it comes with this sheet inside uh, the inside cover with a some, some notes on care of Bibles and an English translation of the um, editor to the readers. Um, and corrections made to the Vatican edition in this print. Very nice, very helpful. Um, first I want to talk about what this is. So. I wanted a copy of the Clementine text, Clementine, Sixto Clementine Vulgate. And that's what this is. 60 Pontificum Maxims. it's abbreviated Clementis. So it's, it's a Clementine Vulgate. And um, churchlatin.com, which is run by, um, it's pretty much a personal project of Derek Bonnell, who's just a regular guy. Uh, I think he's a diesel mechanic, it said, um, on his website. Um, and he just does um, the church Latin stuff in his free time. So very interesting. Um, this is a reprint of the Disclee edition, the 19th century Disclee edition uh, from the Society of St. John the Evangelist. Um, so Disclee, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but they were a company in the 19th century. They made some very beautiful liturgical books. Um, so I'll just talk briefly about the Sclee. So they're the publishers for Slem Abbey. This is my 1953 Graduale Romanum. And so just so you can see an original Disclee book as an example. Um, I mean, this is late, kind of later in their, their earlier books. Their 19th century books were even more beautiful, but they have these, these lovely um, engravings throughout. These really nice um, ornamentation throughout the books that they made. And um, let's see if I can find some good examples. Okay, so here's Easter Sunday. Just, it's a joy. It's a joy to sing from this book because you open up the Easter Sunday. I mean, lovely. Beautiful. So, um, when I saw that he had produced this reprint of the Disclee, the 19th century edition of Disclee's uh, Volket, I was intrigued and... Um, at the time of this recording, you can obtain um, some imperfect hardcover copies. That's what I, for at a reduced price, and that's what I did, although I can't really tell what's wrong with this. Um, it might just be a slight, there's slightly more space on this between the text and the cover here. It comes with, so two ribbons. And he had this scanned, and he got some help, I think, and cleaned up the text. Let's just look at it. So um, the hardcover and soft cover is the same, um, decorated with the kind of remastered title page on the inside. Now, um, the original was in two colors, and this isn't. Um, on the website, he said that perhaps in the future, you could produce something like that, but there is the kind of digitally remastered, cleaned up title page. Biblia Sacra Vulgata. Ediciones uh, Sixtus Pontific Mex Justur. So it's the, you know, Sixtu Clementine edition. Um, 
printed by the Society of St. John, Ioannis Evangeliste, uh, the Evangelist by Desclee, and I um, believe they were in Belgium. So, nice map of Palestine, Palestine or the Holy Land, showing Samaria and everything. And we have here, Editores Lexiori, the editors to the reader, and he has provided an English translation in the sheet that comes with it. Um, the preface to the Vatican edition. Here we have uh, Concilio Tredenti Tredincio Tredincio Tridentio, Tred, Council of Trent's Session 4 uh, Declaration on the Canon of Scripture and what's included in, in the Bible. And then we have um, this from Pope Clement. We have St. Jerome's Prologue. And here we have Genesis, Liber Genesis. Um, and just look at those beautiful engravings. I mean, not simply scanned, but also cleaned up. So, Genesis, Caput, Unum, uh, Chapter 1. In principio creavi Deus cielum et terum. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the text, um, it's a bit on the small side, probably, for a lot of people. But, you know, I mean, it's not too unusual. Um... There are, you know, these chapter headings, which I believe were originally in red. Um, nice, nice paper, pretty substantial. There's, you know, there's some ghosting, kind of bleed through, sort of. And in play, like right here, it's kind of line matched, but if that it's not designed in, but there's not a lot of ghosting. I mean, it's actually pretty, pretty nice. Uh, text. Other than being slightly on the small side, but really a pretty typical. Uh, okay. Ribbons. There are two ribbons. So, Libertatius Regium. Uh, this is third book of Kings. And, okay, at the end of the book of Psalms here, we have the second ribbon. Beautiful. Here's the beginning of the book of Psalms. Look at that. King David with his harp. Okay, let's look at the New Testament. Okay, here we are. The end of the end of Maccabees, and it terminates with Turex Gloria Christi. Glory to Christ the 
Glory to you, Christ the King. And then we have the New Testament. Novum Jesu Christe Testamentum. New Testament of Jesus Christ. Um, so here's the first page of the New Testament. Amen, 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 dico vobis quia ego sum, ostium ovium. Amazing. Um, so here we have Matthew, Sanctum, Jesu Christi, Evangelium Secundum Matteum. Uh, I, I like to look at, uh, when I'm looking at Bibles, I like to look at the beginning of Genesis and then the beginning of John's Gospel, because they're kind of, you know, there's Luke. And here's John, and all the evangelists pictured with their traditional symbols. There's the eagle, which represents John. Sanctum Jesu Christi Evangelium Secundum Ioannum. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apudeum, et Deus erat verbum. They've got all these, throughout the whole thing, they've got these chapter headings. Um, the word is God, life and light, which illuminates all men. It gives a little summary of what's in that chapter. There are cross-references. And okay, at the end, what do we have here? So this is interesting. We have okay, there's the apocalypse. St. John, the evangel uh, evangelist, uh, the vision of St. John. And that's the end of the Bible there. Then we have Apocrypha, like a legit Apocrypha. We have uh, the prayer of Manasseh, uh, the third book of Esdras, the fourth book of Esdras, so the end of that, those books which are often in the Septuagint but not considered canonical by, not listed by Trent anyway. Um, then we have index of um, Christ and the Apostles uh, in the New Testament, citations, I'm not sure what this is. Um, oh, okay. Well, it looks like it's um where Christ and the Apostles have quoted the Old Testament. And we have um, explanation of the meaning of Hebrew, Chaldean, and Greek names. So we have, uh, so Alleluia is right there. Uh, Alleluia. It's a Hebrew word. It means laudate dominum. It means praise the Lord. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, Abimelech means uh, king father. Father king. My, my grammar's not great. Um, at least not yet. Yeah, so. Then we have uh, 
index uh, sort of a uh, concordance, I guess. And we have uh, the lectionary for the traditional mass, um, the Roman the Roman lectionary, keeps the days, what the readings are. And that's the end of the book. There's the uh, information on the publisher. So uh, I'm impressed, I love it. Um, it's a very, very beautiful book. It's, it's not huge. It's about the size of a textbook, really. Nice paper, beautiful, uh, beautiful engravings and artwork. Um, very legible, nice and clean. Um, if I had to say, the only concern I might have is the binding, which, you know, it looks to be a glued binding. I see no evidence. Yeah, it's a glued binding, but glued bindings these days, there are ones that are, are very, very solid, better than sort of historical glued bindings, but I don't know if this will hold up long term. Um, I'd rather see a sewn binding. That would be my only complaint, though. I mean, it is a lovely book, and I can't wait to continue reading it and improving my Latin skills, um, abilities. <clears throat> so I would definitely recommend purchasing it if you think you're interested.